Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today I will show you guys 15 hidden iPhone settings that you must change right away on your device. Now, a lot of the settings are hidden within the settings app. They're buried there and probably a lot of users won't even know that they exist. So here are 15 settings that I believe you should change immediately. Starting things off with auto join hotspot. Now, once you go to the settings of your Wi-Fi on the settings app, just at the bottom, you will find auto join hotspot. Now, what this will do is that it allows your iPhone to automatically connect to hotspots around you when you're not connected to a Wi-Fi network. And you will have here a few options. Now, what I suggest you do here is choose never. That's the best option. So you don't accidentally connect a hotspot near you that might not be that secure. Or at least choose ask to join and never choose automatic. Next up, we're talking about Bluetooth devices. Now, when you go to your Bluetooth settings, you will see a list of your Bluetooth devices. What I need you to do is tap the I button at any of the Bluetooth devices, and you will find here a few different settings for that device. One of them is device type, and this is really interesting and actually very important. So here you can choose which device type that is. If it's your car, you choose a car here, headphones or a speaker. Now specifying the type of the device will ensure the headphone audio level measurements are accurate. That's why this is really important. So you can make sure here you're choosing the right device. Moving on here to the screen time settings. So you go under screen time and then right here, you will find something called apps with screen time access. Now, if you don't have any apps that have access to your screen time, you won't see this section. If you have one or more, it will appear right here. Now, what basically you're doing here is giving these apps access to your screen time. So they will basically know everything about your screen time. So what you can do here is switch these off directly from here. Of course, if you needed an app before or you have actually used an app with screen time and you don't want to do that anymore you can just turn it off from there moving on here under sounds and haptics go to sounds and haptics scroll all the way down and you will find something called headphone safety now what this will do is that it reduces the loud sounds on your iPhone, so of course it can protect your ears. Now what you can enable here is something called headphone notifications. If you enable that every time you have exceeded that limit, it will give you notifications and it will also automatically turn down the volume at the level that it should be. Next up, we're moving under the settings of subscriptions. So you go to your Apple ID and then you go to subscriptions and you will find here a list of the different subscriptions that you have. Now, what I suggest you change here is the sorting of your subscriptions. Now, the best way to do this is choose a renewal date. So it will show the ones that you have to renew the most recent right at the top. So you know which subscription is coming next. And when you see them, if you want to cancel any one of them, of course, you can do that from here. But just like like sorting them based on price. Maybe it's not that practical. It would be way better to have the ones that have to renew the fastest at the top of the list. Going into the iCloud settings, just scroll all the way down here. And what you will find if you tap on show all right here, something called look me up. Now, but what basically you're doing here is seeing a list of apps that have requested permission to look you up by your Apple ID. Of course, you don't want to have a ton of apps or apps that you don't trust in this list. So what I suggest you do is go here and take a look at this list. And if you see any of the apps you don't want to see there, make sure you have them turned off. And just right here under the iCloud settings, you will find something called access iCloud data on the web. Now, basically your mail, your contacts, photos, of course, notes, reminders, everything like that, you can have access to them by going to the iCloud website, iCloud.com. You log in there with your Apple ID and all the things that you have on your iPhone and your iCloud can be accessed directly from the web. Simply go to your Apple ID, just scroll right at the bottom here and make sure you have that enabled. Next up, we're moving under the notification settings. Now, when you go to your notifications and you have a bunch of apps here, let's say you have an app that is really important and you don't wanna miss any of the notifications from that app. Now here's what you can do. So go here and go under banner style. Now temporary will be the default one, which means that the banner, the notification from that app will show for like a couple of seconds and then will move away. But if you choose persistent, then what happens here is that you will have that banner right there on the screen until you actually see it and open it. That's the best way to make sure that you don't miss any of your really important notifications. 
Let's move here into another app and we're talking about maps. When you go to maps, you scroll here and you will find directions and you have walking, transit, cycling and driving as well. Now what you can do here is go under driving and right here can enable something called speed limit. Now while you're driving and you're using Apple Maps for directions, it will also show you the speed limit for that area, which is of course really important for your safety. So what I need you to do, go here and make sure you have speed limit turned on for your Maps app. Now with iOS 17, Apple has introduced a really interesting feature called personal voice. Now, if you're using personal voice on your iPhone and you have a bunch of other devices, then of course you want to use that on all of your devices, but you don't have to actually set it up on every device. All you have to do is set it up on one device. Let's say your main iPhone. And then what you need to do is go under accessibility and you will find here the personal voice settings. And when you go here, you will have a button that allows you to share your personal voice across all of your devices. Of course, that you have connected with the same Apple ID so you don't need to set it up on every device. And we're staying here under the accessibility settings. When you go to accessibility and you go under the touch settings, at the bottom here you will find something called call all your routing. Now what you can do here is choose where your call will go. So you can have it on automatic or you can always have it on the Bluetooth headset or maybe on the speaker. So whatever you want to do here, whichever one you prefer, you can actually select them from here and your call will go straight to that mode without you having to actually do anything. Now just right here, we'll find another setting. This is called all the auto answer calls. It allows the phone to automatically answer a call. So what you can do is go here, enable this button and then it will show you here this menu from where you can choose after how many seconds you want the call to be answered. So let's say the six is here, the default one. When someone is calling you after six seconds that your iPhone starts ringing, the call will automatically be answered. Moving on into the mail settings, go to mail and right here, just at the bottom, you will find include attachments with replies. So when you get a mail that has an attachment, whether you want to include that attachment when you're replying to that email or not. Now here are the options and what I suggest you do is choose ask. So that's the best way. So of course, different emails, different topics will always be different from one another. So you don't want to do the same thing for every like different conversations that you have your email. So when you choose ask, your mail app will ask you before it sends the reply, whether you want to include that attachment or not. Moving on into the calendar settings and we have here something called time zone override. Now you can enable this and the time zone override feature will always show the event dates and the times in the selected time zone. So when it's off, the events will display according to this time zone of your current location. But when you have this on, it will override that. And of course, it will always show the events in the selected time zone. And last but not least, we're moving to the music settings. So go to music and right here, we'll find something called downloaded music. Now here is something very specific. You will see every artist, every song that you have on your iPhone downloaded locally, which is of course taking up space on your device. And this then will allow you to actually delete them one by one. So if you're just deleting them from the music app, you're probably not seeing how big of a size it is and how much how much space it's taking on your device. But by going here, you will see exactly how much each song is taking up space on your device. And of course, you can choose to delete them from here. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Of course, subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you on the next one.